All right, guys. So it sounds to me like this series or this this week's focus is going to be like pretty on point for a lot of us. What is happening with these emotes? They're like bouncing off the side. That's so funny. I keep seeing your cute little emotes, Dalgree, and they're like, they're like, did you did you notice that? They're like bouncing off the side, and they're like in this weird little spot. It's funny. Looks like I need to fix something. <laughs> So funny. Is that a Islands oh, an elk? Oh, that's so cute. I love it. I love it. Those are adorable. Um, and Delkery, I'm gonna say, if anybody here is looking for Oh, is it stuck behind the cam No, it shouldn't be stuck behind the camera. That's weird. Wait, where's my Hold on. Did my... No, webcam's way down here. It's weird. I don't know. I'll have to look at that later. <clears throat> it's like some of them... Some of them are, like, floating in the middle, and then some of them get, like, stuck on the side. It's really weird. I don't know. There you go. Just spam them. Just go crazy. Oh, there we go. See? Like, some of them are, like, randomly in the middle, and some of them are just, like, peeking on the side. I saw one of them... <laughs> So one of them was super funny. It was here. Let's see. We're over here. 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 There we go. <laughs> it was like in the corner and it was like peeking out of the corner. It was adorable. I love it. So it's like some of them are showing up and some of them are, I don't know. I love it. Oh, see, like that one didn't show up. Man. I'll have to figure out what's going on. I probably messed something up on the size of the alert overlay. Oh yeah. It's like, it's like too too tall i'll fix it i'll fix it later that's super fun though i love just the random emotes just hanging around um okay so yes so this week we are jumping into the topic of prepared that is our that is our theme this week is prepared so that's our keyword okay um i was thoroughly blessed by a friend's wife making them for me yeah those are so cute i love that I love to see everybody's really adorable emotes. I feel like I just, like, I don't even know. Like, I just made mine, and they're just kind of, like, I don't know. I feel like everybody else's just seems so much cooler. So I might get some cool some cool ones made. I just don't even know yet. So, but um, I know when we unlock the next one, people have been requesting an Amen emote. So I wanted that one to be, like, super cool. I almost said no to kawaii emotes <laughs> no say yes they're so adorable <laughs> oh man i love it i love it mooses are one of my favorite animals so i was looking i was like oh my gosh is that a moose and it's an elk but i love elk too they're just oh man just beautiful creatures love it oh what i was gonna say dalkery um i know you are a fellow uh streamer correct and um i would love for you if anybody here is um looking for other uh fellow Christian content creators and you would like more to hang out with, uh, look up Delkery and feel free to post your channel and stuff. I love self-promotion here. Super love it. Like super, super love it and encourage it. Um, so for real, feel free to put your channel on everything. It's not weird. I promise. <laughs> so anybody that's not familiar with Delkery, um, check them out. And, uh, Anybody else, too, that's in here that's, um, <laughs> that would like to promote, like, feel free. I, I know that sounds really weird. That's super weird to hear in another streamer's channel. Hey, like, super self-promote. Like, no, for real. Like, I, I really mean that. I love self-promotion. There you go. Yay. Oh, gosh. Dang it. Hold on. I got to fix this. I got to fix this now. I forgot my stinking bot. I switched bots. I switched bots. And I keep forgetting. That is totally me. Let me fix that so that you can actually self-promote. Because that happened last week. And that's super annoying. Let's see. Filters. It's not even like... What the heck? I'm so confused. We're just going to like... <laughs> Why did it filter that? Oh my gosh, my bots are like losing their minds right now. I don't even know what's happening. Goodness gracious. 
I'm still like figuring out. Oh, okay. Okay. I got it. I got it. Okay. Let me, I'm still like figuring out stream elements. Um, and it's like, it's super fresh. Like this is only like, I don't know, the third stream that we've had, maybe the third stream that we've had, um, stream elements instead of stream labs. So like, you know, when you switch to anything new, it's like, it takes a while to like get all the right settings and all of that stuff. So, um, if you are familiar with stream elements and know where I'm supposed to be going to fix this, cause I'm like, it's not even, that's super weird. It's like the filters are off on here. So it must be, <laughs> apparently your last name is inappropriate. <laughs> Oh man, trust me, I feel ya, I feel ya. My real name, which I'm not gonna say on stream, um, I don't disclose that information. I had some very um, unpleasant teasing growing up because of my name. There's some, there's some stuff, man. Okay, let's see. I, I'm so confused, let's see. Yeah, that's the only, I don't, I don't know. I may have to look at this later, but I will fix this. In fact, I'm going to make a note to myself to fix this later and like figure out why the heck. Cause I'm not sure it, all my filters are off in stream elements. Um, oh, I wonder if it's in Twitch itself. I betcha. I betcha it's in. Haha. -ha. Uh, okay, post your link now. <laughs> That's funny. That's friggin' funny. Yeah, I bet you that's, yeah. Yeah, it's Twitch. Okay, so, and then, uh, let's see. Well, I guess I just, yeah, I gotcha. Yay, there we go. Thank you, Yoshi. Thank you, thank you. Yes, there we go. Okay. <laughs> Noob status over here. <laughs> oh, goodness gracious. All right. Well, oh, Yoshi, Yoshi. I, I, I killed our chapter verse bot. Can you help? <laughs> I killed it. I don't know. I don't know what I did, but when I switched to stream elements, it died and I just don't know. I don't know how to do it, but yeah. Your help would be really appreciated. Okay. <laughs> the possibility of the streamer never misses me. Twitch, you can add my name to the white. Yeah, I think he just did. I think he just did that. I think. I think Yoshi just did that. Um, if if it didn't. Actually, I think I did too when I approved. Yeah, see, I, 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 I permitted the term Delk. <laughs> so... You should be good. If you're not, then I'll just approve it again if it freaks out on you. <laughs> just, like, put your name in every variation and we'll just get them approved. <laughs> no worries. No worries. That's so funny. Oh, there we go. See? We'll just, appro we'll just approve them. <laughs> oh, I love it. <clears throat> oh, what? It wasn't working last week. Wait, Yoshi, did you already fix it or am I just like... There we go. Yes, thank you, Kenneth. In John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. <clears throat> oh, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I think my problem is that I couldn't, I couldn't figure out, um, I couldn't figure out how to, uh, I couldn't figure out where the bot was. Like, I don't, it's new. I, yeah, Yoshi did all that and I have no idea where to find it. So, oh, it didn't pop up for you. Oh, so weird. Really? I don't know. That's super weird. Oh, <laughs> It does hate you. Apparently, it just keeps. <laughs> oh my gosh! I've approved like.
like six messages from you. That's so funny. <laughs> what a great way to start the day, man. You guys crack me up. Oh, goodness. Okay. Well, I will say <clears throat> that verse as as like, I don't know, maybe cliche as that might sound. That verse is actually a great segue. <laughs> Jesus loves him, I think. Um, Jesus loves everybody. Everybody. Okay. Um, because, oh my gosh, I'm like laugh crying. <sighs> Goodness gracious. So, <clears throat> our topic is prepared. And with John 3.16, I love this because... So as much as I think you were probably just trying to test the bot, but like for real, actually, uh, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Okay. God, God gave us such an intense game plan. Like he prepared the way, like humans broke our, like we broke our relationship with him, right? When sin entered the world, our relationship with God was like shattered. Right. And so, he planned and prepared for us to be able to come back into relationship with him, right? And so this verse right here is such a perfect segue. God loved us so much that he wanted a relationship with us again. He designed us for relationship. He designed us to be in relationship with him. <laughs> oh, so much. That he made a plan. He prepared for us to be able to come back into relationship with him. And not just any plan. But he planned for his only son to be sacrificed. He planned to make himself like us. Walk the earth. Spread the truth and sacrifice himself and his son in the flesh to come back into relationship with us. So that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. That's a, that's, that's like a crazy plan right there. Okay. Like who would do that? God would do that. And God did do that. So gosh, I need to turn that off. That bothers me. I don't know why, but like the merch shop thing bothers me. And I totally meant to turn that off. I know. Oh, it's promotion. Oh, get out of here. I think it like auto created itself, you know, when I like set up the merch shop. So I'm just going to turn that off real quick. Okay. Um, don't mind that. <laughs> I mean, if you want to like cool, but, <laughs> um, self deprecation could be a good thing to avoid. Um, Yeah. It's all in line of Twitch. That's not my normal humor. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, so, so God prepared the way, right? God prepared the way for us to come back into relationship with him because that's what we were made for. And that's what he wants. Not because we deserve it, not because we earned it, but because that's what he wants. That's what he made us for to be with him, to be in relationship with him. And that's, that's, I mean, that's what we're designed for. So he is the master planner. Okay. He not only gave his son so that we could come back in a relationship, but then he also knew that like, even though he did this crazy, huge thing, right. Of sacrificing Jesus for us, he knew that people for generations and generations and generations would still not believe, right? He knew that people were still going to fight him. He were still going to reject him. We're still going to walk away. And he needed more plan, right? For us to, to bring us into a relationship. But he knew that, right? He knew that from the beginning. He knew that he was going to need a lot of work to happen to bring people to him. So he made plans. He prepared for us to come to him and he knew exactly what it was going to take. And he did the work to make it happen, right? Because we're worth it. 
Now, as this relates to our self-esteem, right? Healthy self-esteem. We so often beat ourselves up and have this mindset of like, you know, oh, like I'm horrible. I've sinned so much. I've made so many mistakes. And how could God possibly love me? How could, po how could God possibly want me and his family because of everything that I've done? Oh my gosh. I can't even tell you how many times I've heard, oh, like if I walk into a church, I would just like, <laughs> like blow up in flames. Like, I, like I, I cannot enter a church. I cannot be, you know, near God. Um, <laughs> can you teach Twitch on this for me? <laughs> Yes, you are worth it. You are worth it. You know, and um, that is just such a, that's just an awful mindset. And not just awful as in like, oh my gosh, like that's just awful. You shouldn't think that. But like for real, like it's awful because you're missing out. You're missing out on a beautiful, beautiful relationship with your heavenly father. And, and he knows what you're worth. You, all of you, all of us are worth so much to God that he sacrificed his son for us and continued to go through the crazy things that it's going to take to bring all of us to him, right? Because if you think about it, think about your personal testimony. Think about your personal testimony and what it took for you to come to God, like, dang, it took a lot for me to come to God, like a lot. And God knew, God knew everything that I was going to have to go through and everything that I was going to have to suffer to come to him. And he planned for that. He prepared for that, right? So I love sharing with people that you are a unique, unrepeatable, beautiful, and intelligent miracle of God. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that is exactly how God sees you. You are unique. You are unrepeatable. You are not like anybody else. You are beautiful and intelligent and a miracle of God. Absolutely. That is how God sees you. And so often, we just see ourselves as broken. We are broken. But you know what? We are beautifully broken because even through our brokenness, God still wants us. God still chooses to have a relationship with us and still chooses to do what it takes to bring us into relationship with him, knowing what it's going to take. Like he knows like long time ago, he knew what it was going to take to bring you into relationship with him, but he did it anyway. And there's a lot of people out there that it, he's still working, right? Millions of people, he's still working on them. And he is constantly working on millions, billions of people all the time doing whatever it takes to bring them into relationship with him. Whatever it takes in his will, obviously, right? Like it's, but he's going to do what it takes to bring you to him because he wants you that badly. And if he wants you in a relationship with him that badly, there's a reason for that, right? There's a reason for that. So, Berians, he said, I've found that it's less about something God sees in us then it is that God is simply good. Yes, that's a beautiful way to put it as well. When we think about who we are in comparison to God, we truly are worthless, and his desire to save his enemies speaks more of the worth he places in us through his son than any inherent worth we already possess, which in truth is nothing when compared to him. Yes, yes. So, because <laughs> with that, you can honestly say you are invaluable. Like, you, you are just... There, there is, <laughs> compared to God, right, yes, technically we are worthless, but like at the same time it's not an, oh my gosh, you're so worthless, like you're a terrible hunk of junk. It's not like that. It's you, you are priceless. You are, you are worth so much to God. He loves you so much, even though you're broken even though you're sinful, even though you you totally probably have just completely disobeyed God for a long time in a lot of horrible ways, like I have, right? But God loves you so much that he fights 
to be in relationship with you. He will fight you to be in relationship with you. That's how badly he wants you. Right? Oh, that's your tag, Delcree. <laughs> nice. I like it. I like it. That's, that's very good. God is so good, and it shows that uh, shows in that he made a way to save someone so not good. Exactly. Exactly. God is good. Like, just, just simply put, God is good. And that's not like a simple like, hey, like, that's a good burger. Right? <laughs> like, that's a, that's a good game. Like, oh man, that's a, that's a good keyboard. Like, I like that. No, God is good. Like, he is good. Like, oh my gosh. Like, there's just, dude, like, there's just, you can't even describe it other than just, just pure, pure good. There's nothing bad, nothing flawed, nothing just, it's just, God is good. Just good. The, like the definition of good. And we abuse terms all the time, right? Like I love this song, right? Like I love this game, right? I totally uh, I totally love this, uh, this monitor. I don't know. Right. Like <laughs> I love everything. And, and, you know, we just throw these terms around so willy nilly, but like when it comes to God, that's where like the true pure definition comes from. God is good. God is love. Right. We talked last week about like, what is, what is love according to God? Like real Oh, hiccups, ow. Real love. God is love. God is good. Yes, exactly. So we throw these terms around, right? But we have no idea what they mean. And we totally abuse them. Like, let's be honest. Like, we totally abuse all these beautiful words, all these beautiful actions, these beautiful things that God has given us, and we totally abuse them and just like, oh, we just throw them around, right? But God cares so much for us that he prepared, he planned for us. And that's a segue into our verse of the day, okay? You can do exclamation V-O-T-D in the chat, and it'll pull up the verse of the day if you'd like to read it with me. I'm going to read it from my, my Bible right here. Um, oh, also, fun fact. <laughs> so I talk a lot about the different Bibles that I have, and I'm going to make a point to like bring each of them out in different scenarios and different different things that we're studying there is um in the in the channel down below i'm like waving my little bookmarky half index card around um there is in the channel there's bibles i use and there are links to each of them that i use so if i tell you like hey like this is the bible that i'm in you can see which one i'm actually using i thought that would be kind of cool kind of helpful um and then you know if somebody's interested in actually looking into it you can see what i've got because I've got a lot of really cool ones. Oh, man, there's a couple There's a couple that I, like, really, really want. Um, but I love the different kinds of Bibles that you can look through. This one's a women's study Bible. And then one of the ones that I really liked, two, actually, there's two that I really like to reference is a cultural background study Bible. And then um, a quest study Bible. Those are, like, super cool. Um, but you can, see, you can see all that in the channel down below in a panel. There's Bibles I use. You can see which ones I I use but we're in the women's study bible today yes it is a women's study bible but i'll tell you what there's some amazing notes in here so relevant for everybody not just women just saying okay um <clears throat> okay so we are gonna jump into jeremiah 29 okay jeremiah 29 and of course verse of the day what do you think it's gonna be jeremiah 29 verse 11 one of my very favorite verses ever for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans for good and not for evil. Plans for you to prosper. To give you a hope and a future. I totally just like gave that from memory. Oh man, guess I better go get my men's Bible. Didn't know it is such a mess of in here. <laughs> Yeah, you get your man Bible, okay, and I'll get my woman Bible. It'll be just fine. Just kidding. Totally just kidding. Please don't, like, clip that or anything. <laughs> That's terrible. <laughs> I 
Okay, anyway. Um, <laughs> oh, now I'm like paranoid. Okay. Um, yes. Okay, so. NKJV. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil. I give you a future and a hope. And then um, uh, NIV translation, though. Oh, now, now, I got, now we got the bot working. Thank you, guys. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans for welfare and not for evil. To give you a future and a hope. God says, I know the plans I have for you. I know the plans I have for you. My plans are for your welfare. They're for good. They're to take care of you and protect you and provide for you. That is the plan that I have for you. My plans are for your future. They are to give you hope. They are to keep you going. Right? That is God's plan for us. That is the plan that God has for us. For good, for our future, for a hope in him, right? And hope for our future. That's the plans that God has for us. So often we caught up in, oh my gosh, like this isn't working. Like why is my plan not working? Why every time I plan something, does it just all apart because it's not God's plan or maybe he's telling you to wait maybe it's just not time yet right I tell you what okay a weird kind of uncomfortable topic but it's a great example and a great testimony piece in my life of like this verse I had to cling to it when I was getting a divorce it was not a good thing and we it, I was working on this for a long time it was several years and it needed to happen and I knew that like it was man, I was there's so much up and down so much up and down and I just was just totally losing hope and just trying to like figure out God like what do you want me to do here because clearly like this was not supposed to happen like this relationship this marriage was not like I knew going into it which I know was like terrible this was not what I should have been doing and so I needed to come out of it and um I know it's a super weird super weird topic right but but truly I remember sitting outside a courthouse in my car and I had been turned away um I, I had finally, like, I'd gotten to a point where I had been before a judge, all that stuff, and I was declined. And I was like, God, I don't understand. I do not understand, but I'm going to trust you. I'm going to trust you. And it was like, finally, in this moment, I was like, I realized that I hadn't been trusting God and I hadn't been giving him control. And that was like one of the ultimate, like I give you control moments of my entire life where I was like, you know what, God, this is not going the way that I expect it to go and the way that I really think that it should go. But God, obviously you have a plan for this and I don't know what it is right now, but I just, I know that I have to trust you and I just need to listen and I just need to do what you're calling me to do. And I was just sitting there and I was just praying and the song, even if came on, and I was like, oh, <laughs> like, you know the song I'm talking about? <sighs> that song came on, even if. It's like, even, basically, like, the theme of the song is like, even if, like, what you want to happen does not happen, like, I'm still going to trust in God, right? Yes, and exactly the same kind of theme, you know? And, and that song came on, and I was like, okay, God. I hear you. I hear you. I'm just, I'm giving you control and I'm going to let you deal with this because I am lost. Like, I don't know what else to do. And from there on, I just gave it to God and I didn't even realize that I hadn't been right. I feel like that's so common for us. I didn't even realize that I was trying to take control of something I had no control over. Right. And so I had to just let God let his plans work, right? Just 
God, I, I'm going to trust your plans. I'm going to let you roll out your plans and I'm going to stop worrying about my plans because my plans suck, obviously. <laughs> They're not working. So God, I just, I want to be on track with you and I want your plan. And literally, didn't take long after that. I'm not even kidding you. Like, maybe that, that's not going to be the case every time, right? But, like, literally, when I finally, like, wholeheartedly gave up my plan, what I thought was going to be best, what I thought I needed to do, what I thought needed to happen, I gave that up and I gave it to God. And I said, God, just whatever needs to happen, I give it to you and I'm just going to let you do your thing. And finally, like, everything just worked and it was okay. Right? There's a lot of times in my life where letting God take the reins was so hard, but that is exactly what I needed to do in order for life to work. It's like the theme of this study could be capstoned by the song by 10th Avenue. Oh, I yes, exactly. A song by uh, 10th Avenue North. God, you don't need me, but somehow you want me. Exactly. Exactly. And you know what? We got to stop getting in the way of God's plan. Right? So like the theme this week is prepare. You cannot prepare. Like you can, you can make all your plans. You can make all of your plans, but you are not going to be prepared for what God has in store, especially if you're not listening to him. Because you know what? One of the common things that we pray for in my house is, God, thank you for what I have because I know in an instant it could all be taken away. No warning. Just gone. All of it. Right? Think of what we're living in right now. None of us saw this pandemic coming. None of us could have been prepared for this to happen, right? As much as we might think like, oh, if I had only done this, like, oh, if I had, you know, come up with my emergency supply sooner, or even if you have, like, you're ready for the apocalypse, right? Like, you're still not going to be prepared for everything that is happening and everything that's going to come your way. And the only way that we can plan and prepare is, is, is if we follow God's plan. That is how we prepare. That is how we plan. That is how we follow through where God wants us to go is if we follow where God wants us to go. When we go off and we try to take control and do what we want to do, we break the plan. Like we walk away from the plan. We do not stick to the plan and we are not going to be prepared for sure. Not prepared. If we go off of God's plan, the only way to be prepared is to stay on God's track and stay in tune with him, pray to him, talk to him, study his word, right? It's the only way for us to be prepared in any way. And really the only way that we can be prepared is by being in tune with him, right? Often the plans of mice and men doth go astray. Yes. <laughs> yes. I've had plans I shattered and broken. I've had plans shattered and broken. Things I have hoped in fall through my hands. You have plans to redeem and restore me. You're behind and before me. Oh, help me believe. Absolutely. And that's exactly what we're, what we're talking about right now. If you want to get to that beautiful place in life, right, wherever you are, like, first of all, appreciate where you are. Like, that's step one, right? Like, like, thank you, God, for where I am right now and where I've come from. Thank you, God, for that. Like, for real, thank God every day for where you are and where you've been. Because that is part of the plan. And that is part of how he's preparing you for whatever is ahead. And then just thank God, whatever is ahead, God, just thank you for whatever you have in store. I don't know what it is. I don't need to know what it is. But thank you, God, for whatever is ahead because you've prepared the way. 
you have made a plan for me and my life. And I just thank you that you care enough about me to do that. I just thank you, God, that you, you care enough about me to plan my path out. Whether I follow it or not, like, you know what's going to, you know what I'm going to fight. You know what I'm going to disobey. You know what I'm going to follow. And you know what I'm going to miss out on. And you know what I'm going to be blessed with. You know what I'm going to have. You know what I'm going to be stubborn about, what I'm going to take advantage of, what I'm going to take for granted. You know what I'm going to be grateful for. You know every little bit of my walk, God, but you plan this out for me. For me, you plan this out. And I am worth enough to you. I am important enough to you. You love me enough and care enough about me and my future and my path that you pave the way. Thank you, God, for that. I don't know what's ahead. I don't need to know what's ahead. I just know that I need to trust you, God, because you've paved the way. And I know, like this verse says, to give you hope and a future, plans for welfare, not for evil. And knowing that, knowing that is so vital, so vital you have to remember that when life doesn't feel like it's going your way, when life feels like, holy cow, like, I don't know what is going on. I mean, this pandemic is a great example. Like, what on earth? Everything that's happening in our nation right now, in our world right now, like, things are nuts. But you know what? Trust God. Just trust God. I don't have to know all the answers. I will not have all the answers. You will not have all the answers. We won't know all the answers, but God does. He has it planned out. He knows exactly what's happening. He knows exactly how you are being impacted. He knows exactly how I am being impacted. And when you trust him with the plans, you trust his plans. I tell you what, life gets a lot easier in a lot of ways because you have his peace with you. Maybe life itself, like the physical things that you go through, right? The literal living of life. Like some of those things are maybe not going to get easier. But it's easier because we have God. And it's easier because we're with God. We're, we're walking in tune with God. We're walking on the path God gave us. And Kenneth, if you are listening, what is, what is your favorite quote from um, our studies? Because there you go. That's a relevant a relevant one right we we have to trust God's plan we are not going to be prepared on our own <laughs> we are not going to be able to prepare on our own if we try to prepare the way that we as human beings try to prepare we're gonna totally flop like it's gonna happen let God guide your plans let God make your plans and you follow his guidance, follow his direction, follow the path that he's paved out for you. <laughs> you need your notes. <laughs> God's already solved all the problems. We just have to catch up to him. He's already gotten it all figured out. He has it all prepared. He has it all planned. He literally wrote the ending right? He wrote the ending there. It's already figured out. Like everything is already planned out for us. Trust in that. Trust in that. And see, that's it. Oh man, seriously. Like think about this for a second, guys. Think about this. We literally know what the end looks like. Am I right? Like God tells us, this is the point that you're all working towards. And this is how you get there, right? That's what the Bible is. So this is how you this is how you walk in tune with me. <laughs> you're fine. This is how you walk in tune with me. This is how you get to this ending that I've made and you're on the raw and you're on the right side of that ending, right? What side do you want to be on? Trust me, there's a clear answer for that. 
We all want to be on God's side of that ending. Am I right? And he tells us how to get there. And, and he has a plan. He has a plan for all of us. He has prepared the way for all of us. Every bit of it. You have to trust him. I know the plans I have for you. They're plans for good. They're plans for you to prosper. They're plans for your future. So you have a future. They're plans of hope. Let God guide your path. Let God provide the path. And he will provide for all of your needs. Trust me, he will. <laughs> Trust me, he will. Oh my goodness. I could go on and on stories of how God has just been so faithful. And I tell you what. Oh my gosh. I, two, little over two years ago now. I left my job. I had uh, an eight to five, <laughs> you know, I had an eight to five job. I was in, I was, you know, like a business professional for, for several years and God was pulling on me. It's, it's about time to go. Like all of a sudden it was, it, you're going to leave soon. You are going to leave soon. And I was like, God, like, why would I do that? Why would I leave my job? Like, <laughs> what? And I just trusted him. And literally there was, I, I was, you know, talking to my family and you know, this is what God is telling me. And I just feel it. Like I just cannot ignore this. Like it was so strong. I could not ignore it. And it was so weird. I was like, okay, well, you know, I think about this time, you know, around this date, like that's kind of where I'm feeling, you know, I'll officially do it. And then all of a sudden one day God was like, nope, you're doing it tomorrow. And I was like, what? <laughs> like you're crazy. But I obeyed and made the decision. I put my notice in the day that God told me to. And if I hadn't done that, I wouldn't be here. If I hadn't done that, I would not be sharing his word on Twitch, on our blog, in this community. And, you know, I, I would not be doing this. I would not be building a ministry for his glory if it weren't for this separation. If, it, if I hadn't left my job, it didn't make sense to me. God was telling me to do something that made no sense to me. And it was terrifying. And I was like, God, how am I going to, you know, live <laughs> like but I just, I felt God just remind me in this verse. He will provide. He will provide. And he has. Oh my gosh. Like, I don't even know. Like, I even lately, I'm like, God, like, this is just mind blowing. The things that he's doing to provide for me so that I can keep doing this. Holy cow. I'm like, what? What? God will prepare the way for you and it won't make sense and it'll take a lot of trust and a lot of faith, but you have to trust his plan. You just, you just have to, right? Here she says, yeah, we have, we have to be ready for persecution and death taking up our cross because it's a momentary affliction. Absolutely. And you reference second Corinthians four seventeen and 18 for this light momentary affliction is preparing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison. As we look not to the things that are seen, but to the things that are unseen. Yes. For the things that are seen are transient, but the things that are unseen are eternal. And the things that we don't see are the plans ahead of us. <laughs> That's one big thing that we don't see. But God has your eternity planned out. Isn't that crazy? He has your eternity planned out. Your eternity. If you want that eternity that God's planned out for you, you got to trust him. You have to trust him. He will provide for you, not just, you know, earthly provisions, right? But he will provide a path for you, a plan for you that he's already made. He made it a long time ago before you were even like a, a little speck in the universe, right? Like whatever you, you weren't even thought of by the human mind yet. And, <laughs> and he already had a plan for you. 
I just, oh man, it just blows my mind. Like that's just such a humbling, it's so humbling to just recognize that God loves you so much that he plans it all out for you. And, and don't, don't mess up God's plans, right? You don't want to mess up God's plans. You want to stick to God's plans. You want God's plan for your life. Even if you don't think you do, trust me, you do. And everybody needs to get to that point. And it'll happen in, in your own unique time, in your own unique way. But as you step out in faith and you just trust God, faith gets bigger, trust gets stronger, and the provisions get deeper. Man, you will be blessed when you choose to let God prepare the way for you. It is a blessed path. Yes, it's hard sometimes, but it is so blessed. And there is so much peace and joy to be found in it, even when there's chaos. Okay? I want to hop over to Proverbs. We're going to hop over to Proverbs 16. I'm just going to, I'm going to read through Proverbs. There's a particular verse that I want to focus on, but I want to read through Proverbs 16 or at least like a chunk of it. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> Proverbs 16, the preparations of the heart belong to man. But the answer of the tongue is from the Lord. The preparations of the heart belong to man. We like to make our plans, right? But the answer of the tongue is from the Lord. But God is going to be the one to tell you if that's going to work or not, right? All the ways of a man are pure in his own eyes. You may think your plan is great. But the Lord weighs his spirits. You may think that your plans are honorable, but God will be the judge of that. God will determine if your plans really are pure intentions, if they are good intentions. And I think that that's, that's really important to recognize as also, if you really do have good intentions, he'll know that. But if you have selfish intentions or bitter intentions, he'll know that too, okay? Commit your works to the Lord, and your thoughts will be established. The Lord has made all for himself. Yes, even the wicked for the day of doom. Everyone proud in heart is an abomination to the Lord. Ugh. Though they join forces, none will go unpunished. In mercy and truth, atonement is provided for iniquity. And by the fear of the Lord, one departs from evil. When a man's ways please the Lord, he makes even his enemies to be at peace with him. Better is a little with righteousness than vast revenues without justice. A man's heart plans his way, but the Lord directs his steps. Divination is on the lips of the king. His mouth must not transgress in judgment. Honest weights and scales are the Lord's. All the weights in the bag are his work. So the, the main focus right there that I want to come back to get my handy dandy highlighter out. If you do not highlight in your Bible or make notes or whatever, it's a very helpful practice. It is not disrespectful. It is helping you study. But teach their own. Proverbs 16 verse nine. We're just gonna 16 verse nine. Trigger the bot. There we go. The heart of man plans his way, but the Lord establishes his steps. Guys, we try to make our plans, right? God knows if what you're trying to do 
is for the right reasons. He knows if what you are working towards or working on is for the right reasons. He knows. Okay? And so if you stumble and fall in those plans, they weren't meant for you, right? Or maybe it was bad timing or whatever, right? If God takes you a different direction, he's going to know, though, what your intentions were. But if you have bad intentions, selfish intentions for your plans, he will correct you. And it may not feel very good. He will humble you if you have selfish intentions. And we are people, we are broken, we are so sinful, and we are selfish. <laughs> Just tried to mix those two words. It was kind of appropriate. Um, we, we talked a lot last week about selfishness is the opposite of love. And if you love God, and if you love people as you're called to, you are not going to be selfish. <laughs> oh, hiccup. We are called to love. Plain and simple. Love. Don't be selfish. Love God. Love what he does for you. <laughs> oh my gosh. Patience and kindness are the top two traits of godly love, patience and kindness. And when you are patient with God and kind toward him, when he's trying to plan out your path for you, it goes a long way. Don't have selfish intentions for your plan, for your plan, right? A man's heart plans his way. We can make our plans all day long, but the Lord directs his steps. God's still going to redirect you. He's still going to try to guide you back to the path that he wants you to be on. And you may fight him. That's a choice. You can choose to fight him. But it's also a choice to love him and obey him and follow the blessings that he has laid out for you. I tell you what, when I realized that God had a plan for me, like when I came to that point in my faith journey where I realized, wow, God has a plan for me and I just need to trust that plan and stop trying to figure it all out on my own right it, it became a lot easier it became a lot easier to just kind of let go of the control that I thought I had and I live in a, in a much better state of peace because I recognize that I don't have control and I'm not meant to have control. And that's not a bad thing. That's a beautiful thing because God is in control. And that means I don't have to be, that means I can look to God and say, God, what am I supposed to do here? And I don't have to like rack my brain, figuring it out on my own. I just lean into God, God, what do you want me to do here? What am I supposed to do? And the, the, the closer you get to God, the better you start to hear him. And you get closer to God by intentionally growing in your relationship with him. It needs to be an intentional choice. What is, what is this? Oh, why are you showing me your notes? Well, you, the, your notes are for you, kiddo. It's okay. Your notes are for you. Okay, so a man's heart plans his way, but the Lord directs his steps or establishes his steps. God's going to redirect you if he needs to. It's not a bad thing for God to be in control. It's not a bad thing to follow his plan. It's a blessing because we don't have to figure it out on our own. That's so incredibly important when we when we really let that sink in and we really just give it to God it can make all the difference in the world for you and you can then break down that wall break down that barrier right the stubbornness the selfishness put that aside and just <coughs> bless you and just give it to God if he needs to redirect more like 
More like when he needs to. Yes. <laughs> yes. Valid. Valid. When he needs to redirect. Absolutely. That's very true. Because he will. He will. Right? Like, I mean, I can, it's, I can't even count the times that God has absolutely redirected me. And, you know, if we don't obey, if we don't listen, that's when things have a tendency to get a bit painful, right? He will, he will discipline you to get you back on the right track, but it's still a choice. It's a conscious choice. Um, I love this, this, so within my Proverbs, um, 16, there's, this is a study Bible. So there's a, there's a snippet here and it says happiness, a positive choice. Happiness can be defined as a feeling of spiritual contentment that will carry you through the triumphs, pitfalls, and even heartaches of life with calm, stability, serenity, peace of mind, and tranquility. Happiness may or may not be related to the happenings in your life. In many instances, the outward happenings in a life affect our attitudes. However, happiness is also an act of the will. We all have things happen in our lives that give us reason to be unhappy, but we have the power through Christ to make our own response to those happenings. Happiness is a potential positive choice. Jesus gives some characteristics that promote a response of happiness. Meekness, righteousness, merciful, peacemakers, all throughout Matthew chapter 5 there, uh, verses 8 through 11 specifically. A believer must concentrate not on doing, but on being and living. Total commitment to the Lord will result in a believer's instinctive Christ-like response to various happenings as they occur. You must appropriate the tools God has given, his word and his indwelling spirit, in order to pursue happiness. When a believer's faith and conduct are balanced, happiness will always result. Happiness is enjoying everything the Lord has given you and not fretting about the things that have been taken away or withheld. Happiness is trusting in God's sovereignty and omni om oh my gosh, I can't, blah, 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 and omniscience. Om oh my gosh. You know what I'm trying to say. You must believe that in every happening God will work for your good. Happiness comes from daily obedience and faith in the Lord. <laughs> um, happiness is like, happiness is like peeing your pants. Everyone can see it, but only you can feel the warmth. <laughs> oh, gross. I feel like what you just read mixed up joy and happiness while only using the term happiness. I think it's important to understand the difference. I was actually about to point that out as well, actually. Um, so thank you. Yes, we are human beings, not human doings. Oh, I love that. I love that. For real. For real. Um, we are... We have free will. We have choices to make every day right? We have choices to make every single day. Oh, you're good. Oh, did you just highlight it? Oh, that looks so weird on this program. Or is that a tag? Oh, that's a tag. I was like, wait, why, why does it look so weird? Yeah, no, you're good. You're totally good. No, that's perfect. Um, yeah, you were being led there. That's, that's perfect. I think what, for me, what this is trying to do is it's trying to make the term happiness, that's the more relatable, right? Like people, like, it's like, it reminds me of that movie, Pursuit of Happiness, right? Like we all just, we're all just on the hunt for happiness. We're, we're just trying to find happiness in our life. So that's a relatable term, right? You're freaking me out right now. Oh, that's so cool. I love that. Do all the things. 
totally, totally, what were we saying? No, um, what were we saying? Derailed. <laughs> oh my goodness, guys. So, happiness is a choice. Joy is also a choice, right? So, happiness and joy are constantly mismatched, right? No, you're totally fine. You're totally fine. It is a choice. So, joy... True joy comes from God, okay? So I think here's kind of the difference as far as I understand it. Let me just make that clear. As far as I understand it, like, let's talk about it, okay? Like, I'm interested to see what y'all think, too. Joy is, like, true peace and contentment straight from God. Like, it is just, like, that just fills your soul, right? That is from God. Joy is straight from God. Happiness is a choice. Happiness is, it is, we can choose to be happy or we can choose to give all the excuses why we're unhappy, right? All of us have quote unquote reasons and excuses to be unhappy, right? And we can choose to let those consume us. We can choose to see things as bad, as negative, as, you know, unhappy circumstances. Or we can choose to, to be happy and content in where we're at. Oh, excuse me. Alex, I see you. Not to be a total downer. Nope, you're totally fine. Never a downer. But an update on my sister's partner's mom. Oh my gosh, my cat just screamed at me. Did you hear that? That was so loud. Um, I'm sorry, she scared me. I'm sorry. Okay, an update on my sister's partner's mom is that she isn't getting any better, so they are going to do a brain scan to see if there's any activity still. But it's been several days of not getting enough oxygen, so please pray for all of them. Absolutely. Oh, man. God, be with that family. Whatever happens there, God, will you just, will you bring them peace and help them to just be filled up with whatever they need right now? Guide the doctors, guide the family, guide everybody that is involved in that situation, Lord, and just be with them and, and give them whatever it is that they're needing right now and help us to wrap our arms around them in whatever way that we can. Amen. Alex, I'm sorry to hear that. Thank you for the update, for real. Like, never a downer. Never a downer. Thank you for updating. Definitely be keeping them in my prayers. Uh, Burians. Happiness is fleeting and temporal based on circumstance and our choices in those circumstances. Pause for a second. So, yes and no. Happiness is fleeting and temporal based on circumstances and our choices to the circumstances. I would say it's more based on our response to circumstances because we can, it's a choice, right? We can choose to respond with happiness or we can choose to respond with unhappiness, right? So it's not like, I think, I think the part of the problem is that our society, our culture is so circumstantial, right? We are so focused on, well, this happened, so I'm going to be angry. This happened, so I'm going to be bitter. This happened, so I'm going to fill in the blank, right? So we're so focused on, you know, well, I have a reason or I have an excuse to, to be this way, to act this way, to feel this way. Well, you know what? You also have plenty of reasons to not be that way, to, you know, be as an act, you know, feel whatever, not like, you are who you are. No, like, that's not what I'm saying. So we all have reasons for all kinds of things, but we also all have a choice whether to be happy or unhappy. It's a choice. It is a, it is a choice, right? I love how it said, um, <sighs> dude, 
do, 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 do. You must believe that in every happening, every circumstance, God will work for your good. Happiness comes from daily obedience and faith in the Lord. Right? And good morning, Johnny. We are still like nose deep in our in our study on prepared. That is our topic this week is prepared. Uh, it is easier to choose to exhibit happiness in the circumstances if we are submitting to the Spirit's work in us. Exactly. Oh, I'm sorry. Clapping my mic. Uh, that joy... <laughs> That joy would be naturally produced so that happiness becomes a natural fruit of that joy. Exactly. That's such a great way to put it. Thank you. That's a great way to put it. Because it's even talking about, you know, um, basically like, you know, things happen. Like life happens, right? But as you, as you um, become more like Christ, it becomes more natural to do what Christ would do, right? To respond in a Christ-like manner. And and as this relates to being prepared, th that's so relevant. Because how often in your life have your plans just totally been thrown in the trash? Like, that's what it feels like, right? Like, you make these plans. You have this vision. Like, you want this right there, right? And, and just, boop, nope, God says no. Like, that's not happening. Or that's not the way it's going to happen. Or that's not when it's going to happen. Right? And you're like, what? Like, how could you do this, God? But I worked so hard for that. I've been planning for years for that. Right? You can choose to see it that way. Or say, you know what, God? I guess that's not where you wanted me to go. Right? Thanks for the lurk, Valkyrie. Thanks for hanging out, dude. Thanks for hanging out. I appreciate you. Come hang out anytime. <laughs> God is going to establish your steps. And you can choose to be content. You can choose to be happy with the fact that he has planned out your path. Or you can choose to be bitter about it. You can choose to be unhappy and be angry at God, be impatient with God, be unkind to or about God as much of our culture does, right? Like that's what we see all around us. Don't choose to be a part of that mindset. Choose to be set apart. Choose to do as Christ would do. Choose happiness. It's a choice. When I was, when I was like 14, I think the one lesson, I have a really tough relationship with my dad. Okay. The one lesson, the one lesson, I'm not kidding you, that I can take away from my dad is this. When I was a teenager and growing up and everything, like I had freaking every reason in the world to be bitter, to be upset, to be unhappy. My life sucked. It was awful. Like there was just so much my parents, neither of my parents wanted me. Like it was bad. Like it was just, I, I won't get into all of the details right now, but like it was bad. It was, it was really rough growing up. And I felt very entitled about my, you know, terrible attitude. And I just remember talking to my dad and I told him, I was like, I'm just miserable and I just don't want to be miserable anymore. I don't want to be unhappy. I just want to be happy. Like, why can't I just be happy? Like, I just want to be happy. And I was so stuck in feeling sorry for myself and thinking about all the horrible things that were happening and just, you know, just wallowing in it. And my dad said, just choose to be happy. And I was like, you're dumb. Like, <laughs> that's, that's so dumb. Like, that is just crazy. Like, you can't just <laughs> choose to be happy. Like, if I could just choose to be happy, I'd be happy by now. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like that's just kind of our culture. That's kind of the attitude. Like, <laughs> you can't just choose happiness. 
happiness happens when this happens and da 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 and like you know happiness ebbs and flows with what you have or don't have or you know maybe your happiness relies on other people maybe your happiness relies on your money or your things or your job or your kids or your parents or your family or your friends or whatever we live in a very materialistic society i'll be happy when no. Choose to be happy. Just choose it. It took me a long time. But that stuck with me. He told me that. And I was bitter. And I was angry. And I was hateful. And I was messing up a lot. Like, pfft. That's dumb, Dad. Like, you can't just choose happiness. Like, come on. But after a while, like, it just brewed. It planted a seed. And it brewed. And it grew. And eventually I, I started to understand, you know what? It's exhausting. It is exhausting. And it really, it started to make sense as I started to pay attention that I was totally choosing to stay miserable. I was totally choosing to just feel sorry for myself. I was choosing to focus on the bad things. I was choosing... To just be angry. And when I realized that, I realized how exhausted I was and why I was so exhausted. And that's when I started to really, like, I was, the seeds were being planted. Like, God was planting seeds without anybody, like, nobody talked to me about God. But, like, God was planting seeds. And that's when it started to grow a little bit. Happiness is a choice. You can be happy with where God leads you, or you can be unhappy with it, but you know what? Let him guide you. And, and when you choose to be happy with where he guides you, it's a whole lot better. It's a whole lot better. Johnny says, You see the apostles rejoicing in all sorts of terrible situations, not by manpower, but rejoicing in Jesus. Exactly. 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 For real. Oh, excuse me. Oh, excuse me. Rejoice. Be happy. Be grateful because God is good. God is so good. And he has it all planned out for you. He's got it all figured out already. Like your entire path. Even where you go off into the wilderness and you just completely disregard him and completely disobey him. Like, he knows when you're going to do that. He knows what's going to happen and he knows when you're going to come back. And he knows what it's going to take for you to come back. He knows what you're going to have to go through in order for you to come back. He knows what you're going to need to go through in order to learn an important lesson. He knows all of it. Every single bit. Every single in and out. And he knows that you have choices. He gives you choices. He doesn't just, boom, there you go. There's blessed with happiness. Like, there you go. Like, you're just filled with happiness, right? It's basically what joy is. When you have the Holy Spirit and you just trust in God and you just let him fill you up with his peace and his joy, that's joy. That is from God, okay? Happiness is a choice. It's contentment with where you are and what you have, even if you don't like it. Even if you have a lot of reasons to be unhappy, you still have reasons to be happy and you still have a choice to make. If it's hard to choose happiness in such a situation, it suggests that it hasn't been made a practice to guard your heart. Yes, that's a very good point as well. It's a very good point as well. Um, in regards to, I'm assuming that was in regards to the comment I was, um, pulling back to here that it, you know, as you get closer, I, I love this. I love this bit that I got from, uh, from, I don't even remember now where it came from a sermon from church or one of our studies or something, but, but it was, I think it was a study that we did a couple weeks ago. Um, but it was, you know, the, the more you learn about Jesus, the more you learn about how to live. The more you learn about Jesus, the more you learn about how to live better. Okay, so as you get closer to Jesus, you learn more about how to live better. 
it becomes more natural the closer you get in relationship to him, okay? And with that, guarding your heart, absolutely. Um, you got to guard your heart. Pray for God to guard your heart, always. And when you have your heart guarded, it's a lot less likely to be influenced by evil things, right? By negative situations by you will be a lot less inclined to be impacted by the negativity you're surrounded by or you're experiencing listen my son and be wise and direct your heart in the way it should go proverbs 23 19 absolutely and alex says you know i have my share my fair share going on and there was a time i would have held on to sadness and let it en uh, envelope envelop me Words are hard today, apparently, um, and drag me down. Not saying I'm jumping up and down in joy at the moment, but I have faith that what happens has its purpose and it's not tearing me up like it would have. I still feel lucky and blessed and I don't feel like I'm anything, I'm sorry, I don't feel like anything can truly take that away anymore now that I know and acknowledge God is there with me always. Ugh. Oh, I love you. Oh my gosh. You know how amazing it is to just have seen you? Oh, I could cry right now. I love you. Like that is, oh my gosh. God knows what it's going to take. And you know what? Let me encourage you to, oh my gosh. I could cry right now. Like, I'm not even kidding. I could cry just because I'm so happy for you. <sighs> stop it <laughs> don't stop it but uh, no like for real because let me just tell you guys okay let me just tell you guys and I'm totally like messing up on my steps so I'll catch up on my steps later this is just too I need to focus here <sighs> guys sometimes the path God is going to take you on is not for you Sometimes it is for you, but sometimes it's also all the time. Let me just rephrase that. <laughs> Your path is never just for you. Sometimes it's not for you at all, but it's never just for you. Because what is our mission? Our mission, our plan that God has made for us is to bring more people to him. And let me just tell you, if I hadn't quit my job as crazy as I said, no, I'm not telling anybody to just quit your job, okay? If I hadn't quit my job and started this community and started doing this, there are people, and I'm not giving myself credit, this is God's credit. Like, I don't even, this blows my mind, but like, Alex, we wouldn't have met. You wouldn't have been a part of this community because it wouldn't exist. What? God plans the way. He prepares the way. And we have to just trust his plan, even when it seems crazy. Even when it seems awful. Even when it's terrifying. Even when it gives you, like, a million reasons to be upset. Trust God's plan. You have no idea the fruit that will come from following his plan. And Alex, I have been so blessed to see you grow. Oh my gosh. You didn't even claim, I'm sorry if this is like way too personal, but you didn't even claim to be a Christian. You didn't even claim to be a believer. You were completely against God when I met you. And now look where you are. Oh, I could cry. That's amazing. Great. You mean my life has been disrupted at 7 a.m. for this? Yes. Yes, it has. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, my gosh. Guys, our topic is prepared. You will never be prepared on your own. You will never be prepared. The best that we can do is trust God because he is prepared. He is prepared. Yes, thank you, God, that you are prepared for me and my mistakes, that you are prepared for whatever comes that I'm going to need your guidance, 
your correction, your discipline, your instruction, your lessons, your teaching, your your relationship, whatever comes my way, God, just thank you that you already know. And I don't have to. I don't have to worry about it. I just get to live in a constant state of, you know what? I just trust God. And I know that he's going to lead me where I need to go. And I just trust that. Be ready to act when he tells you to act. Be ready to do. Be ready to say. Be ready. Because he will call you for his glory, for his kingdom. He will call you to do something crazy. And when you step out in obedience and in faith for what he is calling you to do, oh my gosh. But please understand and please remember, it ain't always just for you. And if you have a heart of me, 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 you're doing it wrong. Have a heart for God. God, whatever I get to do for your kingdom, however I get to glorify you, however I get to bring people closer to you, God, use me. Use me. It's like that. that <laughs> I just realized, uh, Kenneth, then, oh my gosh, we need, we're going to get your post published, and that's so relevant this week. Oh my gosh. You didn't even know. Your post this week, Kenneth's blog post is going to go up. I'm going to try to get that up later today, latest of tomorrow. Your post is so relevant this week. We keep bringing up songs, right? There's several songs that we've brought up. Um, do something. It's absolutely relevant. That just popped into my head. You know, how often do we just, we turn on, you know, we turn on the news or we look through, you know, our, our Discord servers or we see, you know, how, oh my gosh, I'll go through zone chat in ESO, you know, the, the game zone chat. And there's all kinds of crazy happening. Everywhere we go, there's crazy, right? Uh, I've been talking to, talking it to others to wanted to write. Absolutely, dude. Like, and you don't even know, like, it's so relevant to our study this week. Like, it's crazy. God, God's crazy. Like, crazy amazing. Crazy good. Um, but how often do we see something happening and we're like, man, like, why doesn't somebody do something about this? Or man, why? Like, how, like somebody needs to change this. Like somebody needs to do something. You know what? Maybe you're the one that needs to do something. I tell you, there's plenty of times in, in zone chat, I'll see people being horribly mean to somebody and I'm like, <laughs> you would. Oh man. Um, <laughs> you cracked me up, man. Yep. Good quote. God's crazy. God is crazy. Crazy. Good. He is crazy. Good. He is crazy. He's crazy because look at everything that he does for us and we certainly don't deserve it. Right. We can't earn any of it. That's crazy. That's so crazy. So in ESO, like I'll be going through and find something <laughs> that is entirely up to you. I don't think I have any clips yet. I genuinely, I don't think I have any clips yet. Um, oh gosh, what have I gotten myself into with that one? Um, I'll see people being mean. And you know what? I take that as an opportunity. I take that as an opportunity. You, you would think that in... You guys would crack me up. You would think that in a game, like, it's just normal for people to just be mean to each other, right? So most of the time, we just leave it alone. Like, ugh, that's just how it is, right? You know what? No. I challenge you all. I challenge you all. If you see a situation where you're like, you know what? God, is this where you can use me to help? Do you need to go and Bible thumb people? Like, no, right? But we're called to love everybody. And if you can shine a little bit of love into a chat, I challenge you to do that, into a situation. I challenge you to do that. 
maybe you're in a pug group and everybody is terrible. Like they are not doing well. Like it's just a terrible, terrible group. How many times has that happened? You know what? I challenge you to have patience. I challenge you to be the one person that remains kind and remains patient. You see conversation in chat. I see conversation in chat all the time. People being mean. And you know what? I will be the person to speak up and say, you know what? I'm going to buy your thing. Just because, you know what? You could use a little kindness right now. You know, whatever. Just reach out to them. It doesn't have to be like public like, oh my gosh, you guys are so mean. Like, don't do that. Like, don't fuel the fire. But like, you know what? <laughs> I'm running around as a cleric and smiting people. <laughs> oh, man, that's so funny. Oh, my goodness. No, <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> but seriously, find the situations. Let God use you. Let God use you to make a situation better, to make somebody smile. Be a reason for somebody to have happiness, right? We live in, acknowledge the fact that we live in a circumstantial world. We need more happy influence. I didn't make it like the news, I love some context. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Um, be the reason. Be the reason somebody finds happiness. I feel like my laughter is like scaring people away. I keep like, whenever I like laugh really loud, I see the viewer count go down. <laughs> like I'm scaring people away. Oh my goodness. Guys. Be the reason. Don't miss an opportunity to shine some light. Don't miss an opportunity for God to use you and don't miss an opportunity that God has put in your path. Don't be scared of it. Don't be impatient with it, right? You don't have to know the right things to say all the time. Just, just lean on God. Be like, God, I see that you want me to do the thing, but I need your help. I had the time to edit for people. I love making fun clips and would love to put them together for streamers. That would be super fun. That would be super fun. I love it. Yeah, I think genuinely. It says that I have two clips, but I don't know. I don't, I don't think, do I have two clips? Like, can you guys see that? Like, I don't think I have a clip. All my numbers are like all wonked. I'm really confused. Yes, I think that that was the first official clip. Thank you for that. That's great. You guys crack me up. So. <sighs> a man's heart plans his way, but the Lord directs his steps. I challenge you. <laughs> like I have blocked your name again. What the heck? <laughs> oh my gosh. Um. Yes, child. Uh, since God's plans are like it's gonna happen if we do a firm thing, does it go the it does it not go the way he Okay, so my kiddo was asking a very good question. Uh have a good morning, gotta finish my web design. Oh heck yeah, get on that. Have a good day, Berians. Um, so my kid asked if, so since God plans everything, right, um, if we make a wrong choice, what was your, if we make a wrong choice, Okay, okay. So if we make, since God plans everything, if we make a wrong choice, does it not go the way God plans? So in order to get God's result, we have to go God's way. Does that make sense? So he knows when we're going to disobey because we have free will. We have the choice. Hello! We have the choice 
to do what God wants us to do or to go do our own thing. And when we do our own thing, then we get our terrible results, right? But when we choose to do what God wants us to do, we get the God result. Okay, so we get the, we get um, whatever he has planned out for us, the good things that he has planned, we have to stay on his path to get them. Because if we're over here, right, like if we're like way over there and the blessing is over here, how are we going to get the blessing if we're way over here, right? We can't. We miss it. Or we've got we've to come back. He's got to redirect us to get back on the path so that we can get the blessings that he has in store for us. Yes, yes, my kiddo is referencing the sermon from yesterday, and yes, good question for sure, um, and and somebody else answered the question as well for you. Uh, so Berian says, no, his will will happen whether we make choices contrary to his will or not. We cannot thwart his plans. What our choices determine is whether or not we will be included in his plan. Exactly, exactly. Um, so... So his plan is going to keep going whether we're on it or not, right? But we're not going to get all the benefits of being on his plan if we're off doing our own thing, right? But we can't mess up God's plan. God already knows. So he already plans for us to go off track, right? And he knows that like, okay, well, they're not going to be involved in this part of the plan, but uh, this person over here will be, right? Or whatever. Like this is how, this is how God's going to get get the plan to work, even if we are defiant and not doing what he wants us to do, right? Um, yes. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you guys are so funny. Oh, man. Go, go. I don't give that much detail. Um, she's a wee little thing, but I'm very private. Um, I appreciate the question, but I hope you don't take offense to me not answering it specifically <laughs> um but she she participates in our bible study off screen obviously but she participates and hangs out and gets to to do this with us so she interjects her questions yeah no wonder no worries dude and hey psh, know also that your kids, whatever age, like this is a very safe, appropriate place for them to join in and listen as well. And I mean, knowing that uh, a wee little one comes and hangs out, like I, I also cater to that. And, you know, if they have questions or, you know, want to inject something into the conversation, like by all means, um, for sure, this is an atmosphere where that is welcome and that is safe to do so. So just know that. <laughs> not right now okay <laughs> mom life <laughs> um yes and virians if you're still here thank you for um thanks for staying for the question and thank you for some clarification on an answer i appreciate that and she appreciates that as well thank you and we discuss scripture and do some study stuff with uh, and most definitely around them as well. Good stuff. Yeah, it's so important. You know, I could totally take the take the view of, you know what? Like, no, this is like mom's Bible study time. Like, I need you to not distract me. And you need to, like, go to your room while I do that. No, that is a terrible. I'm just encouraging you as if you are parents. I encourage you to have your kids around when you are doing Bible study time. Like, have your own private time. But, like, if you're doing a Bible study... Let them be involved and encourage that because that is so important. When they see you doing it and they get to participate, then they, excuse me, they are influenced by that. They learn from that. And then you get to do it together. And you know what? There's a reason why it says, you know, faith like a child. Oh my gosh, hiccups. Uh, there are questions that she asks sometimes that I'm like, you know what? That's a great question. You know, or it's just, it's just things that maybe I know the answer, but maybe I need a reminder. Or maybe, you know, that's an opportunity where kids don't know. Like, they need to learn. And so if you have kids, it's a great opportunity for you to go grow your relationship with them and help them grow their relationship with God. 
So highly encourage that. And absolutely, especially like it's summertime, we're all stuck at home. Like kids are at our ankles all the time. Like for real, like you can have your kids here and it's a safe place to do that. I, I assure you. And if it's ever not, like, if you ever are like, oh my gosh, like, I don't want my kids hearing that. Like, please tell me. Cause like <laughs> definitely not the atmosphere we want. <laughs> Especially with mine sitting right here the whole time. Like it's terrible. A lot of time I try to study and read while listening to worship around them. And I know that they will see it and impact them as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. Like have your time. Cause like your personal time with God is so essential but also getting them involved in that is so important and doing it together is so important. Hey, I keep her off of my camera. Like privacy is a big deal for me. So like that way. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, you see the cat. Stinky cat. The cat's being a butt. Um, so after looking at your clips, the one has a poor little sheep moment from Minecraft. <laughs> oh, it does. what the heck oh now it says i have three clips what on earth i don't even know i don't even know i'll have to look at them later i did i'm so confused it, this morning it's so weird this morning it said i had no clips and then like five minutes or so before you did the clip it said i had a clip and then you did the clip and then it said i had two and now it says i have three and i'm like what on earth so it's like freaking out i don't even know anymore don't even know this is crazy <laughs> thanks for the pro bono detective work i appreciate it <laughs> oh my goodness guys you guys are stinking hilarious this is awesome so um just a little recap because i know a few people have just come in um we've been talking about our topic this so we're in a series called healthy you and our series is about like healthy self-esteem and different aspects of that okay so the first week we talked about rest so important second week we talked last week we talked about relationships okay and there's a in the channel there is actually a link to last week's uh blog post our study on relationships i would love for you to read that um and then <laughs> i try to clip your exactly moment but twitch had an error go figure <laughs> Oh my gosh. Um, so relationships was last week. And this week is uh, prepare. We can't prepare ourselves. Right? Like we can. I love this verse. A man's heart plans his way, but the Lord directs his steps. God has a plan for us. And when we walk on his plan, on his path, and we let him provide for us, oh my gosh. Like, come on, it's just so much better. Like, life is still hard, but it's a lot easier to get through the hard stuff when we lean into God and we just trust him. I thought the relationship series was well done. Oh, thanks, I'm glad. Thank God for that. Um, I'd like to thank my wife, my mom, my friends, and mostly my God for bringing me through this hard time. <laughs> Oh, 